Oh hi, didn't see you there, I was just polishing my shaft. That's a metaphor by the way. Magic, I think we can all agree, is pretty badass. Imagine having the power to command arcane forces beyond the understanding of most, bending reality to your whims, a power I'm sure we as humans would never ever abuse, ever. There are so many things you can do with magic, which is something Dragon's Dogma takes full advantage of. Magic in this game is more than just a collection of different elements to line up with weaknesses like its Pokemon, though it is certainly good for exploiting that. Spells often function in unique ways and provide benefits outside of Wolf, do not like the fire. So if you too wish to distract yourself from the pain of your invite to Hogwarts getting lost in the mail, then look no further than the various magic classes of the game, the first of which is Mage. Now that we've covered Strider, a speedy, high-octane class, it's time to slow things down a bit as we delve into some mystic arts. Mage occupies an interesting spot in the game's vocation roster. It's absolutely fantastic as a support class for pawns, and almost a necessity at lower levels, especially given its role as the typical healer of the game. However, as an actual playable class for the Arisen, it can be extremely hard to recommend over Sorcerer as a generally more effective alternative. Even so, this wouldn't be much of a class guide if I just told you to go play Sorcerer instead, and Mage does in fact have some tricks up its sleeve, so let's have a look at what the class has to offer. Normally I don't feel the need to focus on core skills too much, but this is a special case because two of Mage's core skills are equivalent to unique spells in their own right. On their own, these skills are kind of whatever, but once you bring enchantments into the mix, they suddenly become mad effective. The first, Magic Agent, is performed by holding Heavy Attack and surrounds you with balls. These things last for around 30 seconds and will deal damage to and potentially stagger enemies who draw too close allowing you to utilize them in an aggressive or passive manner, generally most useful for keeping you safe in close quarters casting. They gain a significant damage boost when conjured with an enchanted weapon. This also goes for the second core skill I want to talk about, Focus Bolt. This one's performed by holding down Light Attack. It charges a powerful burst of magic you can fire by releasing the button. This takes on different effects depending on which magic it's enchanted with. Neutral, unenchanted magic is a single damaging sphere. A fire enchantment results in three flaming spheres. Ice results in three homing projectiles. Thunder conjures five orbs of electricity that ricochet off targets and surroundings alike. Dark magic leads to six spheres of energy that float slowly towards targets. A holy enchantment fires six bolts of light that turn into powerful beams that seek out their targets at Mach 10 and have a chance to heal you. As far as I'm aware, this is the most powerful version of Focus Bolt by a considerable margin. But the others are worth experimenting with. Now if you're thinking, oh boy, time to equip an enchanted staff and use these for free, now nah, I got bad news for you. These variants of Focus Bolt only work when you've been specifically enchanted with the corresponding element via a skill. Little note here that it was at this point while typing the script for this guide that I realized you can actually enchant yourself by clicking in left stick on controller while preparing the enchantment. I never knew that! Sorry if you don't use a controller, I'm not sure what the input is on anything else, but just know it should be possible. Moving on. It's no double jump, but Levitate is really fun to do and can actually cover a considerable distance horizontally. Like look at this! Alright, let's get into some spells. First up is Ingle, or as its advanced version is called, High Ingle. This spell is pretty basic, launches three simple fireballs that explode on impact and can potentially stagger opponents. Deals reliable damage and many enemies are weak to it. Not much to explain here. High Anodyne is the big healing spell of Dragon's Dogma. It creates a large field that heals damage of those who enter at a gradual rate, and will continue to do so for a while, even after they leave as the effect lingers. It can only heal the white portion of a health bar. A grey section beyond it won't be healed and must be recovered with curatives or by resting. That said, it is an absolutely invaluable ability, especially at lower levels, but listen, I'm gonna keep it real with you. This is a spell you basically always want to give to a pawn. Putting the Arisen on healing duty is generally a bad idea because the focus of dealing damage will almost always be better off in the hands of the player. 
but if you do plan to be the only mage in your party, then you do well to make use of this spell all the same. Additionally, it's worth mentioning this spell, given its holy nature, actually deals damage to any undead that enter its field. High Frazzle generates a field of frost around the caster that allows them to freeze surrounding enemies and open them up to attacks from other party members, moving at a slow pace while the effect stays active. The frost field deals little to no damage, but the following blast deals ice damage to any caught in the area of a Frecht. A Frecht? Unfortunately, the frost field can also unfreeze enemies it freezes, which makes the spell's utility unreliable, and it's not your best choice for sheer damage. Consider giving it a miss. High Leaven conjures six bolts of lightning that rapidly strike enemies. It can stun large foes, and because it strikes from above, it can be used to reach enemies who are out of sight or behind cover. Overall, pretty solid. Real quick, the affinity spells allow you to enchant an ally's weapon or your own with fire, ice, lightning, light, or darkness, depending on which you use, which adds magical damage while applying the corresponding elemental effects. This is typically how one best exploits elemental weaknesses, thus making at least one or two of these pretty imperative to bring along. My personal recommendations would be fire, which is a pretty safe bet for most enemy types, and holy, which seems to be about as safe and generally does great damage. But it's worth giving the others a look too, like ice for freezing enemies. While you acquire each over the course of ranking up the vocation, they're all basically the same idea, so I won't bother going into them all further. High Haladum creates a field that removes negative debilitations such as Blind, Poison, Silence, Possession, and more. It's effectively the same idea as Anodyne, but for status effects specifically. Fans of Final Fantasy will recognize this as the Asuna of the game. Certainly worth bringing along, especially if you aren't planning to pack curatives, but given its nature as a distinct support skill, I'd recommend it as something for pawns over Arisen. Like Anodyne's potential to deal damage to undead, it can inflict debilitations to undead, corresponding with the effect of the staff used to cast it. High Silentium, I think I'm saying that right, is more or less what you might expect. It generates an aura around the caster that silences any enemies within its radius. The silence effect lasts for one minute, so be sure to capitalize on that. This spell can potentially shut down enemies and attacks that could otherwise prove to be troublesome, but it's not generally the best idea to use because as a caster, one generally wants to stay at a range and needing to move closer to melee in order to trigger an effect isn't generally a good plan. If you're desperate to specifically silence something, silencer arrows are generally a more reliable bet. This can still be useful against stuff like chimeras and dragons, however. High blearing is basically the same idea and it works identically, but it inflicts blindness instead. Something like this naturally has its uses, but it's hardly something I'd consider imperative given the steps required to blind a foe when you could be spending that time shoving a fireball down their throat. For the same reasons as High Silentium, I might not recommend this one either. High Comestion creates a wall of flames that sets enemies aflame and launches smaller ones into the air. The vertical range on this is extremely good, capable of reaching hovering dragons and evil eyes. Packs a pretty decent punch, just like me. High Frigor conjures three massive spikes of ice from the ground to deal strong damage to enemies, potentially freeze them, and launch smaller ones into the air with a good amount of knockdown. But that's not all! It leaves behind a frozen platform that explodes after a while. It can be used for... well, platforming, but it can also be used as sort of a trip mine for larger enemies especially, since striking the platform makes it detonate and deal damage. This is a good one, definitely worth checking out. Now though, we get to the real stuff. That last one was getting pretty creative but just wait until you see High Brontide. This spell lets you fully embrace the rule of cool by summoning motherfucking lightning whips! Yes, you heard me! Whips that are made of lightning and it's so batshit insanely cool! Why don't more games do stuff like this? It's wild as hell! Look at this! How utterly sick does this look? While it's active, you can press light attack for horizontal sweeps and heavy attack for vertical lashes. Both conjure lightning strikes akin to high levin. Interestingly, both are equally as powerful, and it's worth noting that cancelling the spell manually by jumping, for instance, results in a rain of lightning around you. You can use this to play things safe and strike enemies who come too close while leaving the vulnerable state of the spell itself. High Brontide's badass bolts of belligerent bastard beating are great for staggering enemies and hits larger ones multiple times per attack but its wide sweeps are also massively effective for crowd control on groups of smaller enemies, resulting in a spell that's not only damaging and well-rounded, but also one of the flashiest in the game, and one of my personal favorites for mage and casters in general. Worth remembering, however, that since High Brontide requires you to actively maintain it, you'll want to keep a healthy distance from the chaos, lest you get slapped out of the spell and have to recast it. This naturally applies to any spell that functions like this, but I thought I'd mention it for specifically this.
the best one. At first glance, High Grapnel might seem a bit shrug-worthy. Does very little damage and just binds enemies for a while. So what, right? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? You cares. Because surprise, Sunshine, this spell doesn't just bind the small fry, oh no no! It binds the big bastards too! Dragons and the final boss of Bitter Black Isle are affected by this. A spell that can immobilize ultra mobile enemies and leave them vulnerable to the party for a decent chunk of time is a godsend. You can actually equip this to a pawn and have them use it with the HELP command specifically. With noting that bound enemies are also incapable of roaring and casting, which is always helpful. Finally, High Spell Screen creates an aura around the caster that boosts physical defense specifically while stagger and knockdown resistance stats are increased to 100%, which is pretty good! The physical defense buff can be stacked four times, ideally by quickly cancelling the spell after using it by jumping. These boosts can also stack with stat boosting items like Angel's Periapts, and of course, given this is a holy spell, the aura it generates deals damage to undead. This one's kinda sick, honestly. Very solid supportability, worth entertaining, but keep in mind it's not a be-all, end-all solution to getting knocked down. Dragons, for example, will still be able to stagger and knock you down regardless of the spell, but the defense boost is fairly good regardless. On to the augments. What you'll likely want to entertain most are... Atropo... How the fuck do I say that? Potro Potato, which reduces damage taken from magic attacks. Intervention, which despite the misleading description, protects against various debilitations. Attunement, which boosts your magic, and Inflection, which raises your defense while casting. Beatitude and Perpetuation are good if you want to extend the duration of healing and enchantment spells respectively, but I personally wouldn't say they're imperative, generally speaking. Mage is a composed, well-rounded support class with something of a methodical playstyle. Proper use requires the player to weave in and out of safe ranges, utilizing their party to keep the enemy's hands full while they get to casting. While probably one of the lower damage classes in the game, it's certainly no slouch, and with abilities like High Brontide, it can single-handedly wipe out entire groups of enemies. If you don't mind taking things a bit slower and playing to the specific strengths of the class, you'll find this to be a liberating vocation with a good deal of versatile magic at your fingertips. But you should probably play Sorcerer instead. <laughs> Oh yeah, next up is Warrior. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe, drop a like, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. You can join my Discord for updates and to hang out with the lovely members of the Thieves Guild. I can also be followed on Twitter, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon, or simply donate directly via PayPal. Links can be found in the description below. Have a great day, I'll catch you next time.